Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to address you via this video message on the occasion of the first EU-US international conference series on the sustainable oceans. Ever since the United Nations Environment Program was founded in 1972, the oceans and marine ecosystems have been a focus of our work. In international law and within the United Nations, we recognize four global commons, the Antarctica, the high seas, outer space and the atmosphere. Clearly, our marine ecosystems are confronted with unprecedented challenges today. Just a few weeks ago, a group of leading international marine scientists published a new report in which they identified both the trends and patterns of degradation and destruction and stresses that are imposed on our marine ecosystems, but also outlining areas how we could address this and how to move forward. Part of the dilemma is that in some respects in our economic policy that is often so terrestrially focused, the marine ecosystems and the high seas still are a frontier in the minds of many, an open area, inexhaustible in terms of resources and unlikely to suffer from human impact. We know better today and in fact many of the indicators also provide us with information that should be of extreme concern. It is a frontier in one sense but it is also an open access in other respects. Despite the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, the regional seas agreements that exist and many of the management regimes that are today being put in place, we know that the governance vacuum is still of such a dramatic nature that to some extent we have a vacuum in governance and therefore many of the negative impacts that are often associated with the global commons. This is of extreme concern not only from the perspective of environmental sustainability but really from the functioning of the life support systems on our planet. As we begin to understand both the potential relevance of ecosystems in the marine realm, of the services that the oceans provide to us and the planetary systems as a whole, we are in fact already populating the oceans in a way that demonstrates perhaps greater ignorance and a degree of greed that is not commensurate with the knowledge that we have today. Whether it is deep sea drilling, mining, bioprospecting, the laying of electronic cables, defense marine systems that operate and disturb marine life, Many, many pressures are in fact already impacting upon the oceans before we have properly understood their importance, both in terms of a functioning ecosystem and to us as human beings and our economies as a whole. You can dive very deep into areas today where no human being has been before and you will find the litter and the waste of civilization in the form of plastic, metals, sunk ships and containers, waste essentially that is dumped into the seas alongside the billions of liters of untreated sewage that continue to lead to problems that are associated with deoxygenated zones, with pollution, with the loss of marine life, and clearly a cumulative impact that is close to bringing us to a point where many of these marine ecosystems in specific locations are close to collapse. We also know that in the extractive mode of the fisheries industries, for instance, we are at a point where the current fishing patterns are leading us in a direction where commercial ocean fisheries, somewhere by the middle of this century, in most parts of the oceans are unlikely to be commercially viable. The impact on billions of people in economic terms but also in basic sound ecosystem service terms is frightening. It is for this reason that we in the United Nations Environment Program have a very active marine program and we are currently focusing in three areas in particular that we consider to be helpful to an international community of member states, scientists, non-governmental organizations and the private sector. The first area is to further contribute to the understanding about marine biodiversity and ecosystems through assessments. We know a great deal but we do not yet know enough in order to advise governments in how to manage these ecosystems, where the greatest pressure points are and what the greatest priorities are for action both in the immediate and medium term. A second area of intervention is the spatial management tool. We believe that in many respects trying to understand how best to use the oceans, use them sustainably but also use them in a way that can benefit the ever-growing populations and demands that we have in terms of natural resources, in terms of food and uh, protein, clearly demand that we do use the oceans also as part of maintaining life on, on Earth, on the terrestrial parts of it. Our spatial management tools are an approach to try and understand both the science and the functioning of these ecosystems, but also provide a process by which many stakeholders can begin to work together and collectively in governing the use of these resources, and to ensure that they are available for future generations. The third area on which we are focusing has to do with governance. Clearly the instruments we have so far from UNCLOS to the regional seas agreements are important steps in the right direction but clearly are inadequate at this moment in time. Unfortunately the notion of open access and the negative implications in terms of managing the global commons are clearly visible to all that wish to see at what is happening in our oceans today. 
Our work has to move forward. It has to move forward collectively because clearly the oceans do require international action. They require collective agreements and they require also compliance and enforcement. I believe that the Rio Plus 20 conference next year in 2012 in Rio de Janeiro, 20 years after the Rio Earth Summit, is a moment in which the oceans will feature prominently. Partly because our understanding has increased significantly, partly also because the footprint of human activity has become so much more obvious, and partly because nations realize that protecting this vital part of our functioning planetary system has now become a priority for nations to work together. UNEP is also contributing to this discussion with a report of the Green Economy in a Blue World, which is trying to capture many of the strands of both economic and political and social relevance to agreeing on an international regime for managing the high seas and for conserving and sustainably using marine ecosystems. I hope that at the conference that you will be having in Hamburg, we will receive further input and guidance and also insights from those of you who have dedicated your lives in terms of science and policy making to address these issues. Please count on us in the United Nations Environment Programme to be close partners and allies in this effort and that we will work on our side to ensure that member states will, in Rio next year, make oceans a priority for renewed commitment but also for far more dramatic progress than we have achieved in the last 20 years. Thank you.